Hello, my name is Caitlin Michael and I am a Lens Baby Ambassador. You can find me on Instagram at kshadelphotos and follow along with my Lens Baby journey there. Today I'm excited to be here with you telling you about my first impressions of the Double Glass 2 Optic. I had the amazing opportunity to be testing this optic out over the last couple of months and I found out that this was an optic that I didn't know that I needed. Um, but before I get into that, I did want to point out that this particular video is being shot with the Double Glass 2 optic with the star um, aperture disc. It is being shot at f30 and my ISO is 800. So with the aperture disc, it is making it as if my aperture was um, closed down a little bit more. Um, however, it, on my camera, it is wide open, but it, the aperture disc makes it a little bit darker. So that is something to take into consideration when you are shooting with an aperture disc. Um, but I love that even with a video, I can get all this really neat blur around me that focuses on my face so you can see my face. And I do have that star in there. Um, so we'll have to see after I finish shooting if you can see the star in the bokeh behind me or if it's just still pretty smooth. Um, so I can't wait to check that out when I process this video. Um, but to get started, um, the Double Glass 2 Optic was a lens um, that I didn't know that I needed. I um, was very surprised how much I fell in love with it when it arrived. I have found that it is very versatile. I can go from shooting um, wide open with no aperture discs and it is just like the Sweet 50 because the Double Glass 2 combines um, the capabilities of the Sweet 50 optic, the double glass, the original double glass, and the creative bokeh optic by adding those um, aperture discs in various different fun shapes. Um, so I can take this optic out with me and I can shoot as if um, things that I would want to shoot with the Sweet 50, or I can add in those um, fun discs and I can get some great bokeh um, if I'm shooting something with lights. It was really fun at Christmas time going around with Christmas tree lights as well as all the different um, holiday walkthrough light displays. Um, I really enjoyed getting various different shapes in my bokeh with that. It also adds some excellent texture to the background. Um, if you're familiar with the Soul 45, the bokeh blades um, add some really fun texture that help um, your subject pop. Um, I found some very similar results with the Double Glass 2 when I used various of the um, aperture discs. Some of the ones that are more wide open, like the star and the heart, they give you a very soft um, bokeh, like you can see here in the video. However, if I am using, and you will see examples, if I'm using some of the discs that have more texture to them, like, let's see, um, like the ro or the whirlpool, I think this is the whirlpool, or the birds, or even like the lines. Some of these I found they really added, or the diamond, they added a lot of texture to the background that made my subject pop out. And I found it was really fun trying to look at my subject and figure out what mood or feeling I wanted to convey and trying to match that with the shape and um, the texture or bokeh that I knew it would provide. Something else that I found was really fun is um, taking photos with um, some of these shapes and then using them as overlays. And I can't wait to share with you some of the images I created with overlays taken with 
the double glass too. So at this time, I am going to take you on a journey through the photos that I've taken and talk through my impressions of the double glass while using um, or while showing you those photos. So here we go. Here you see images of where I went when I first fell in love with this optic. I distinctly remember photographing this Ferris wheel and looking at the images and immediately was thinking, this is it. I love this lens. I loved the blur. I loved the texture. I loved trying to match the um, disc, the aperture disc, with the feel I was trying to give and trying to find. I distinctly remember loving the effect of no aperture discs in most of these with the Ferris wheel, but then also loving the effect of the starburst or sunburst on the lights later in this image right here. Um, this is when the lens really started to speak to me as an artist. Speaking of adding texture, I felt when I saw this image that the texture from the aperture disc really created like almost an impressionistic type painting and made the subject pop out of the image. Um, and I really had fun with these alpacas and taking their photos and using the aperture discs. And I noticed the ones with the aperture discs, their faces just popped almost out of the photo more than the ones without a disc. And I felt the ones without the disc were just softer in general and uh, smoother or if the disc was a star or a heart, it was um, a softer blur and bokeh as opposed to one that had more texture as I mentioned earlier in the image, in the video. I found as I was playing with this optic that my favorite um, disc was the star disc and I loved how it really added to these macro images that I took and I even got it to match my shirt in this self-portrait. Um, you can't tell but I have stars on my shirt and there's star bokeh all around me. Additionally I was in love with taking video with these and watching as the bokeh changed as I played with focus and really shined. Um, it was really fun for me to play around with video with this and I look forward to experimenting more with video um, as it's not something that I do often but it definitely caught my eye in this for sure and I think this might be one of my favorite videos that I took watching the fountain water change to become stars and sparkle and everything. Here are a few stills that I took of that fountain and what I really like here is the rainbow omni that really just added to that image as well. So I wanted to share those stills with you also. This image was taken using the gold omni reflection wand. You can see the gold uh, burst a little bit down in the bottom portion of the photo. Um, and this was taken without any aperture discs either so it focuses on that sweet spot, um, sweet 50-ish kind of feel and look. This was another image that spoke to the artist heart in me. As soon as I took it, I really, really enjoy that sun flare that the, um, that the double glass two picked up when I had it at a slight tilt and I had it more out of focus in order to pick up the star bokeh in 
um, throughout the trees. So as you can see, this lens is great as just a walk around lens and it's so versatile. You can use it like a Sweet 50 and you can also pop in those aperture discs to add some extra texture and bokeh to the background and make your subject pop. I really enjoyed it on my walk at the Riverwalk. So speaking of the Sweet 50 approach to the Double Gloss 2, I know people are going to wonder what is the difference then between the Sweet 50 and the Double Gloss 2. If I already have the Sweet 50, why do I need the Double Gloss 2? Well, I did some comparison pictures here and you can see there is virtually no difference between the Double Gloss 2 and the Sweet 50 when the Double Gloss 2 has no aperture discs. So, why do you need the Double Gloss 2? Well, the Double Gloss 2 is so versatile because you can add those aperture discs. That's what makes it a lens set apart. You can stack the aperture discs, which I have not done yet, but you can create all kinds of bokeh and texture with those aperture discs, or you can keep the aperture discs out and have that smooth bokeh and have that sweet 50 feel, but you only have to take one optic out with you. Additionally, this lens is fantastic for creating overlays that you can use um, on your images to create double exposures, whether you do it in camera or in post-processing. So here's an example of an image that I took um, in order to use later as an overlay. So this is actually a fire and you can see the star bokeh from the star bokeh aperture disc and then I used it to overlay over this image of my dog to show extra celebration because it was her birthday and I really love how it makes these engagement photos pop with those uh, stars that just kind of add some extra sparkle. So I wouldn't say I'm an expert at overlays, that's something I'm still learning, but this lens is pushing me to learn more about creating my own overlays to create some um, double exposures, again, whether it's in camera or in post-processing. Thank you so much for joining me today and following along my first impressions journey with the Double Glass 2 Optic. Again, you can find me on Instagram at kshadelphotos and follow along my lens baby journey there. I look forward to seeing what photos you create using the Double Glass 2 and how you shoot extraordinary.